Hey everyone, it's John Isaias from The Automator, and uh, again, we're going to do some work with ChatGPT3 in AutoHotKey. Today, we're going to show you how you could use ChatGPT to debug AutoHotKey code. Uh, it's a kind of a fun thing, because often you'll get these errors, and you know, it's actually getting better in version 2. It does a better job pointing in the right direction, but in version 1, it's still a little nebulous at times. But uh, let's just see what we can do with it, right? We get an error. Um, go ahead and start. Yeah, going. let's go ahead and... Uh try something out. So one of the of the simple things that I tried, like, okay, we're, we, we want to be kind of like troubleshooting something that I don't know what is wrong. So let's go ahead and force an error. So this is something that it is bad out of hotkey code, right? Because I am missing a space right there. So what I said is, I just told the, the, the chat, there is an error in this auto hotkey code. And again, I'm very specific about mentioning the word auto hotkey because if not, it would try in a different language, maybe. And I would say, what is the error? And I would see what it come up with it. And notice that it tells me, hey, there is no error. <laughs> and, and, and that is wrong. There is an error there. It's just that it doesn't know what it is. So what I what I did was just, okay, let's grab what the error message is. So let's copy that. Run it. I get an error. You can at any point hit control C in any of those dialogues to get the dialogue text like this. So I'm just getting the error right here. And I'm going to tell <laughs> the chat, okay, so I received the following error. And I will just put my error message there. And I would say, how can I fix it? And see what it does. Now, it tells me what the error indicates, which probably I could have guessed that by reading the message. But it tells me not only what the problem is, but how to fix it. Sometimes it might come up with a weird fix like this, but this code is correct. It will definitely just go ahead and create, force an expression correctly. And now I'm passing it two strings. This percent sign here, it probably got a little bit confused about it. It just say like try adding a percent sign what because you're trying to do yeah right yeah so 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 the 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 error says that it is missing its ending percent sign and that's the reason why the the bot tried to go ahead and add a percent sign. But if you copy this text, it's not going to fail. I'm not going to get an error anymore. It's just not going to get what I wanted, which was just the word testing, because the bot just added this additional percent sign. But the bot just tried to understand the error and try to do whatever the error was actually <laughs> uh, telling you to do. So it is interesting that not only you can provide an error, it will try to solve it. But if it cannot, you can pass the error message that you're getting and try to see if the bot can determine what to do with it, which is actually uh, unexpected. And then I said, hey, let's get, uh, let's see if we can get something a little bit more uh, abstract. So I would say the, the uh, following code is not returning the sum of two numbers. How can I fix it? And the reason why I made this question, I made a similar question to that is because I'm just telling it that it's not returning the sum of two numbers. So I, I'm giving it an, an extract concept. And then I gave it code. I said, okay, let's have function here. That takes two numbers. But I'm going to give it the wrong <laughs> return code for it, which is return a minus B. So I'm actually making it return the difference between them. And I'm trying to see if the code would figure out what I mean by this particular esoteric word that for us, it has a meaning, but for, for a computer, it might not have one. But I was actually surprised by it understanding what it's doing. It said like, okay, hold on, that is a subtraction right there. But if you want to fix it, you have to use a different symbol for it. So it's not only grabbing the word sum and difference and attaching it to a symbol, which is what we do as a human, 
is just also providing you the answer to the question, how do I fix it? So it did both things at the same time. And I, then I was really curious about it. And I said, okay, how complex can I make a code so that the, 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 um, that the AI doesn't know what to do with it. So what I did is that I just grabbed a function that I have over there in another program that calls some processes and DLL calls. And I just did this, hey, the following, uh, so let's say this code is throwing an error. I'm not gonna explain what the issue is. I'm just gonna say it's throwing an error so what I'm gonna do, this is a working function. I'm gonna make it not work. I'm gonna just go ahead and add some things here, change this number over there for something that doesn't make much sense. And then I'm gonna go ahead and misspell one of the functions, you know, so I'm just gonna go ahead and basically misspell a little bit what the thing was going on. So I'm not getting, I'm not giving the enough information for the program or the AI to know what to do. I just said, hey, it's throwing an error. Let's see what it does with this thing. Okay. Who? There are a few. Okay. On the second line, the percent of it is to negate the result. This could function an error, such as zero. Okay. Oh, there, it found the typo in the <laughs> in the process token. Okay, incorrect parameter. The third parameter should be twenty, not four. Oh wow. Okay, that is interesting. Hold on, let's do this because I think. There's part of this that has nothing to do, this, this particular one. So let me go down to what I'm getting here. First of all, it looks like even though it cannot determine what the error is, it can at least give you a pointer as to where to look for errors. Well, now, again, though, I would say, shouldn't you repeat the run it in auto hockey and get the error and then say this is the error. Yes, that's what I was gonna say. Like let's let's see what the error is. But my point was that I tried to give it give it a very abstract concept that I thought it would not gonna know what to do with it. But I remember the last time it gave me something like it is not that it is not possible to determine the specific error without more context. I don't know if you remember one of one of the tries that we did. It told me, "Hey, I don't have enough context," but it still tried to list a few things that might have gone wrong with the with the error, which is exactly what it's doing right here. It's still still catching some of the errors. Like for example, I did actually misspell. A function and it just say, hey, there's something, there's a typo. Uh, in some other instances, like the throw here is followed by a comma, which is not a valid syntax. I think it is because it's trying to get the, it, I didn't specify that this is out of hotkey code because in out of hotkey code, the comma after a throw is valid syntax. So I, I might just retry here, regenerate this list, just change it. This auto hotkey code is throwing an error. Let's see what it does when I gave it. Like again, it is still trying. There's a typographical error. <laughs> okay, so it caught that misspelling there. Okay, it just say, hey, be more specific about the error. Okay. It gave me a different list of errors, probable probable errors. But here's the thing. And again, we must be uh, always aware that this is just generating text that looks like an answer. But sometimes what it's giving you is not really an answer. You can use this to at least start looking for um, you things that might create the error. The, the other day, it, it might be a great 
uh, you know, coding buddy, like a thing yeah. to off of and say, hey, what, you know, point me in the right direction. It's not necessarily going to solve it, but it gives you a process when you're working by yourself to help troubleshoot, right? At least, at least you get a list of things that you can start looking into right. Right. Um, when you're blocked, because sometimes you, one might get completely blocked. Like, I don't know. If, well, we are in one of that, of those issues in which huh. we are <laughs> looking for the cause of a specific error and we don't even know where to start because the error is so sporadic. Maybe I could just go ahead and give this AI some situations in which the error shows up and the AI might find a pattern and just spew out some text that tells me, can you check this, 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 and that? And I would just go ahead and start there. It's not going to fix the error probably, but at least I get a starting point or on when, where to troubleshoot my script, which is awesome. <laughs> it, it removes <laughs> uh, troubleshooting time from when, when I'm working, right? So yeah, I might give it a very good try, especially when I get an error that I do not understand. I would just shove the error here and say, hey, I'm getting this error. What can I do? And even, you know, we often say, if you're hitting your head against the wall multiple times over and over, take a break, right? Because you, you need to stop and change and come back. Well, this might alleviate the need to take that break because... Because you are you are taking a break and passing it off to the AI, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's where um, you know, Coding Buddy really helps with that. But this is this could be your coding buddy, right? So right. shows a lot. Of, I think uh, still a lot of promise. There's definitely room to grow. As as we talked about, that was one. Maybe we'll you know review it next uh, in our next video. Is creating our own um, environment where we load auto hotkey code and have examples and start training it on auto hotkey, which then the odds of it providing a better solution. Better solution for, on that particular language, which which is the correct thing, which is the case for JavaScript and Python, which is what they right. said. Like, for example, right. in Python or JavaScript, it very often gives you the right answer. And you yeah. gave me the example of a typo somewhere that it right away said, hey, that you have a typo right here, which right. if we train it in auto hotkey, it might be able to detect those things a little bit better. So let us know if you like that video and like the video if you like the video. How's that? Um, <laughs> write some That's a good one, yeah. If, uh, if you want us to cover a given topic uh, on the chat GPT or AI approach, because it's this is it's fascinating and, and it's just going to get better and better in, in the very short time period, right? I think in a, in six months, our lives are going to be different in, how, in what we're doing, let alone the rest of the world, because there's just... Yeah endless things that you can use this for. So that's right. Let us know what we think. Thanks. Cheers.